That was beautiful. Well, good morning and welcome to St. George's Episcopal Church and the Center for Art and Spirit. I am Reverend Aaron Maxfield Steele and on the piano there was Reverend Deacon Michael Ashmore. And we are glad that you are joining us this morning. Um, you'll find our bulletin on our website, which is stgeorgeswavl.org, that's stgeorgeswavl.org. And you'll also find links to Coffee Hour, which is directly after this service. Um, hope you can join us for that. Uh, this service is pre-recorded, so uh, it is not Sunday morning as we record this, um, but uh, that doesn't mean that you can't interact with us. It's just that we won't be here while you're interacting with us, but everyone else at church will be. You gotta love technology. So if you want to, you can, um, you can write in the comments uh, on this post and other people in the service will be able to see it and respond to you and, um, and welcome. Please let us know if you're a newcomer so that we can greet you appropriately and welcome you um, to this time. We are only holding services online right now as the pandemic continues. Um, we're committed to keeping each other safe. And so we will have these services here on Facebook Live and then they are also posted on YouTube later. I um, also wanna mention that we have uh, closed captioning uh, I think that will happen with this uh, recording. Ooh, buddy, don't touch that. Uh -uh. Sorry, there's a one-year-old under my table. And uh, he likes cords. Um, anyway, the closed captioning, when it's done automatically, uh, sometimes it makes us sound even stranger than we really are. And so if it sounds really strange, it might just be the closed captioning. But... Um, but we're really, really grateful for the, uh, for the deaf and hard of hearing among us. So welcome. Um, encourage you to just take a few moments to center yourself um, because this kind of setup is different from what our bodies have been used to for most of us, most of our lives. And um, the sounds of Ollie barking and Ursa crawling around and making noises. These are the sounds of God's sanctuary. Our opening hymn is What Wondrous Love Is This? And this one is actually in our hymnal. So if you would like to dig out your hymnal and follow along with the, um, with the music itself, it's hymn number 439. What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this, O oh my soul? What wondrous love is this that caused the Lord of bliss to lay aside his crown for my soul, for my soul? To lay aside his crown for my soul. To God and to the Lamb I will sing, I will sing. To God and to the Lamb I will sing. To God and to the Lamb who is the great I am. Wow. I will sing, I will sing, while millions join the theme, I will sing, and when from death I'm free, I'll sing on, I'll sing on, and when from death I'm free, I'll sing on, and when from death I'm I'll sing on, I'll sing on, and through eternity I'll 
Senhor. The last part wasn't me. Blessed be our God. Forever and ever. Amen. I'm going to set this in a safe place where it can't be played by a one-year-old. And I will be right back. Okay, hold on, buddy. Yeah. I invite you to sing the Gloria with us. Um, Michael and I can't sing or play at the same time, sadly, because um, all of this togetherness that we're experiencing is happening through a satellite that is just not as quick as it should be. Um, so if we try to sing with each other, it's just a little bit behind. Anyway, we are singing together at the same time in real life, uh, but not on the recording. So I invite you to sing with us the Gloria. We sing this three times. Oh, I forgot to put my stole on. I'm a mess. I'm just gonna lip sync. So that way it'll look really funny when this time. So it'll look at, it'll look like British television according to Denny. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna need lip sync. <laughs> nice, sounds good, sounds good. Do it in German. Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia, Gloria, Gloria, in excelsis Deo, Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia, Gloria. Gloria in excelsis Deo, Gloria, Gloria, Alleluia, Alleluia. There's the don't put the water down. Um, may God be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, Increase in us gifts of faith, hope, and charity that we may, and that we may obtain what you promise. Make us love what you command through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading this morning comes from the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 31, verses 1 through 12. <laughs> Moses went up, to the, up from the plains of Moab to Mount Nebo, to the top of Pisgah, which is opposite Jericho. And the Lord showed him the whole land, Gilead as far as Dan, all Naphtali, the land of Ephraim and Manasseh, all the land of Judah as far as the Western Sea, the Negeb and the plain, that is the valley of Jericho, the city of palm trees, as far as Zoar. The Lord said to him, this is the land of which I swore to Abraham, to Isaac and to Jacob, saying, I will give it to your descendants. I have let you see it with your eyes, but you shall not cross over there. Then Moses, the servant of the Lord, died there in the land of Moab at the Lord's command. He was buried in a valley in the land of Moab, opposite Beth Peor. But no one knows his burial place to this day. Moses was 120 years old when he died. His sight was unimpaired and his vigor had not abated. The Israelites wept for Moses in the plains of Moab for 30 days. Then the period of mourning for Moses was ended. Joshua, son of Nun, 
was full of the spirit of wisdom because Moses had laid his hands on him. And the Israelites obeyed him, doing as the Lord had commanded Moses. Never since has there arisen a prophet in Israel like Moses, whom the Lord knew face to face. He was unequaled for all the signs and wonders that the Lord sent him to perform in the land of Egypt against Pharaoh and all his servants and his entire land. And for all the mighty deeds and all the terrifying displays of power that Moses performed in the sight of all Israel. Uh. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. We will read Psalm, uh, portions of Psalm 90 to, together responsively by half verse. Um, and it might on the video look like we're flipping, flipping back and forth between the two. Um, that's because we're using Zoom this morning for this recording. Um, so hopefully it won't make you carsick. Um, Psalm 90. Michael, you want to start? Mm -hmm. Lord, you have been our refuge. From one generation to another. Before the mountains were brought forth or the land and the earth were born. From age to age, you are God. You turn us back to the dust and say, Go back, O child of earth. For a thousand years in your sight are like yesterday when it is past. And like a watch in the night. You sweep us away like a dream. We fade away suddenly like the grass. In the morning it is green and flourishes. In the evening it is dried up and withered. In return, O Lord, how long will you tarry? Be gracious to your servants. Satisfy us by your loving kindness in the morning. So shall we rejoice and be glad all the days of our life. Make us glad by the measure of the days that you afflicted us. And the years in which we suffered adversity. Show your servants your work. And your splendor to their children. May the graciousness of the Lord our God be upon us. Prosper the work of our hands, prosper our handiwork. Our second reading this morning is from the first letter, letter to the Thessalonians, chapter 2, verses 1 through 8. You yourselves know, brothers and sisters, that our coming to you was not in vain. But though we had already suffered and been shamefully mistreated at Philippi, as you know, we had courage in our God to declare to you the gospel of God in spite of great opposition. For our appeal does not spring from deceit or impure motives or trickery, but just as we have been approved by God to be entrusted with the message of the gospel, even so we speak not to please mortals, but to please God who tests our hearts. As you know, and as God is our witness, we never came with words of flattery or with a pretext for greed. Nor did we seek praise from mortals, mortals, whether from you or from others, though we might have made demands as apostles of Christ. But we were gentle among you, like a nurse tenderly caring for her own children. So deeply do we care for you that we are determined to share with you not only the gospel of God, but also our own selves, because you have become very dear to us. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Thanks be to God. I invite you now to join me in singing our gospel refrain. We begin by singing, help us attend to your words, O God. And then after the gospel, we will sing, help us respond. So together. Help us attend to your words, O oh God. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. When the Pharisees heard that Jesus had, had, si had silenced the Sadducees, they gathered together, and one of them, a lawyer, asked him a question to test him. 
Teacher, which commandment in the law is the greatest? He said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the greatest and first commandment, and a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Now, while the Pharisees were gathered together, Jesus asked them this question. What do you think of the Messiah? Whose son is he? They said to him, the son of David. He said to them, how is it then that David by the spirit calls him Lord, saying, the Lord said to my Lord, sit at my right hand until I put your enemies under your feet. If David thus calls him Lord, how can he be his son? No one was able to give him an answer, nor from that day did anyone dare to ask him any more questions. The Gospel of the Lord. Now help us respond. Help us respond to your words, O God. Twenty years ago, I was a lay chaplain at Loaves and Fishes, a day center for homeless people in Sacramento where we lived. It was my job to walk around this very dry and very dusty park and just talk to people, talk with them about anything they had on their minds, really. One day, I met a man named William, a homeless Vietnam veteran, a paraplegic confined to a wheelchair due to the injuries from the war. It was lunchtime and William wanted to wash his hands before he ate and his hands were filthy. William's whole body was filthy. The dirt of the world had taken over his body. He had probably not been able to use a toilet or a shower or a sink in weeks. He had most likely not slept in a bed in years. As my grandmother would say, he smelled like a polecat. I don't even know what a polecat is, but they must smell really awful. The dirt of the world had taken over his soul too. He suffered from post-traumatic stress. He didn't sleep well, and his eyes told you that he was tired and lonely and scared. He looked at you tentatively because he was ashamed to show himself both afraid and hopeful that you would look away. A few of the other homeless guys and I managed to get William and his wheelchair into the bathroom and in front of the sink. The bathroom was no cleaner, nor did it smell any better than William. It was summertime in Sacramento, so it was stifling hot in this outdoor room. Three of the homeless men lifted William up out of his chair enough to get his hands under the faucet. They were easy with him, careful, tender, not wanting to hurt his paralyzed body. They were gingerly and delicately making sure he was comfortable. I took this bar of grayish brown soap and washed his hands as his buddies held him up. You can tell that the water felt good to him, so soothing, in fact, that he wanted to cry. But he was so worn, so weary, so tired that I think he was afraid if he let himself, he would not be able to stop crying. I think he might have fallen apart in his own grief. I wanted to cry too. I choked down my tears and looked at William and his friends in this stinky, sweaty bathroom liturgy as it, as it unfolded. I saw three little Jesuses lifting their William to the sink. These three little Jesuses took big Jesus's mandate, his commandment to love God very seriously. They were loving God by loving William the way God loved William. With them, it was, it was inherent. And it's not hard to understand 
the source and the core of their compassion. It was the most profound moment of tenderness I have ever witnessed. It changed me. It humbled me. It broke me into pieces and it infuriated me. It was not hard for me to wash William's hands. Frankly, I don't think it would be hard for most of us. Given the opportunity to be compassionate, I think we are inclined to be so. The gospels call us to live as compassionate people, to be charitable people. But what Jesus is talking about in today's gospel reading goes beyond charity. The question posed to Jesus by the lawyer was one disputed among the critics of the law. Some would have said the law of circumcision was the greatest commandment. Others would say the law of the Sabbath, other the law of sacrifices. Now they would try again to trick Christ with this question, hoping to vilify him and incense the people against him. So Jesus responds by paraphrasing the most central tenet of Judaism, love God with everything, everything. This was a concept critical to the survival of Israel. Loving God and obedience to God's commandment meant rain in the proper season, gathering of grain, wine and oil, grass in the fields for cattle and abundant food. Then Jesus adds the zinger from the, from the Levitical law, which essentially says, because God is holy and because human beings are made in the image of God, those who are called to emulate God's holiness are to do so by acting with mercy and love towards their fellow human beings. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Bingo. That's how we do it. This is how we love God. Yes, we will praise and thank God for all we have been given, but we must want for other people all the things we want for ourselves. We will know what loving God means when we make others' well-being equal to our own. The story in Matthew takes place three days before Jesus' crucifixion, so it seems Jesus was leaving kind of final instructions. In a similar passage from John's gospel, we read on, Mon on Monday, Thursday, Jesus further clarifies what it means to love God and neighbor. When Jesus washes his disciples' feet, he is showing them a new paradigm, a new way of living, a new order not just a humble act. That act says, forget the old ways of thinking and doing. Forget the structures that kept the poor poor and the slaves in a permanent underclass from which they cannot escape. Forget what you have been taught and do as I do. For I have set you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. What infuriated me about William's life was that he had served his country in a horrible war. He had risked his life, sacrificed his body, his mind, his spirit. He came home an injured and broken man. And in return for his service, his country let him slip through the cracks of a flawed system. He was not important to those in authority. He was not valued by society because he was not prominent or rich or productive or independent or powerful. For crying out loud, he couldn't even stand on his own. The dirt of the world had overcome him. He had no house, no job, no clean clothes and no opportunity. The establishment failed William. Well-meaning people failed William. What infuriated me the most was that I failed William. When I washed his hands in the sink, the gospel said I was supposed to do something else too. I was supposed to change the world for William. 
I had a bathroom and a job and a home and clean clothes. I should have rolled William to the middle of the rotunda at the California State Capitol building or to the Veterans Affairs Office and refused to leave until someone with more power and authority could help William make that could help make William whole again. But I didn't. I was about charity and not about justice. William broke my heart, but I didn't know what to do. So I only washed his hands. William's friends did what they were capable of doing when they held him up to that sink. And they did it with tenderness and dignity. They did exactly what they were called to do. The gospel calls us to do both, but Jesus's answer to the lawyer in today's story says, we have to figure out how to turn the world on its head for our neighbor and for our God. I realized recently that the shape of my vocation began to change with my failure with William. I am undoubtedly a slow learner. It is easy for me to love people who, who feel unloved, but my vocation calls me to seek justice for those who have been cast aside. I'm not a timid person, but I'm often unsure of my own voice, not quite convinced that it's enough to advocate or to confront or to convince, not sure that it's enough to affect change. Have you ever felt like that? I think it would be hard to be a human being and not feel like that. I'm sure every generation has felt overwhelmed and uncertain about what to do and what it means to love our neighbors as ourselves. I have learned that loving our neighbors is almost impossible to do alone. But here's the good news. This morning, we are given everything we need to love God and our neighbors. Most importantly, we have been given to each other in the few short weeks I have been with you. I have seen how you take care of each other and how those who find their way here. I have seen strangers welcomed with such sincerity and love that I thought my heart would bust wide open. I have seen what you do for others, for each other in the bounds of this parish and in the world outside of it. Your kindness and generosity are a gift to each other. And when, like, and when you, like me, are afraid to speak up, you will find strength and courage in God and in each other. And we also have the power and the duty to elect leaders who legislate that everyone has enough, that laws ensure protection for those most vulnerable. This morning, we are invited as a family, a body together, both friends and strangers to bring our broken bodies and weary spirits to be fed with pieces of Christ's broken body and shed blood, heavenly food and drink, the food and drink of love and courage and strength. See, we have what we need here for the countless Williams on the other side of our doors. Poor Williams, sick Williams, immigrant Williams, hungry Williams, lonely Williams, caged Williams, terrified Williams. Together as this body, we can find a way to fight for every William who needs us. As this body, we can work to make sure no William is denied their dignity or the equity that should be theirs. As this body, we can wipe away the dirt of oppression of all the Williams in our path and sit, set them free as this body, we can love all the Williams enough to stand with them before the God we love.
Amen. We invite you to join us in our affirmation of that love in our liturgical affirmation. We'll say this together. You, O oh God, are supreme and holy. You create our world and give us life. Your purpose overarches everything we do. You have always been with us. You are God. You, O oh God, are infinitely generous, good beyond all measure. You came to us before we came to you. You have revealed and proved your love for us in Jesus Christ, who lived and died and rose again. You are with us now. You are God. You, O oh God, are Holy Spirit. You empower us to be your gospel in the world. You reconcile and heal. You overcome death. You are our God. We worship you. Amen. This morning we remember in our prayers all of those who are put in our path that need us. I would ask you if, if you are, even though Aaron, or, Aaron and I really aren't there, you'll be there. So if you'll put your prayers um, and thanksgivings in the comments in the Facebook page, you all will, um, you'll see each other's stuff in the <laughs> then it'll be like we're there. So anyway, I invite you to, to put those in. Let us pray for the world, asking that God, asking that the God of love and mercy hear our prayer. For the peace of the world, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all peoples, God of love and mercy. Hear our prayer. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Jose, our bishop, Aaron, our priest, Michael, our deacon, and for all clergy and people, God of love and mercy. Hear our prayer. For all global, national, state, and local leaders, and for all in positions of power that they may be held count accountable to the people impacted by their decisions, God of love and mercy. Hear our prayer. For this city of Asheville, for every city and community, and for those who live in them, God of love and mercy. Hear our prayer. For God's good earth and for the wisdom and will to conserve it, God of love and mercy. Hear our prayer. For the aged and infirm, for the widowed and orphans, and for the sick and the suffering, God of love and mercy. Hear our prayer. For the poor and the oppressed, for the unemployed and the destitute, for prisoners and captives, and for all who remember and care for them, God of love and mercy. Hear our prayer. For all young people, protect and guide, guide them that they may grow in love and hope and may find your peace and grace throughout their lives. God of love and mercy. Hear our prayer. For all who have died in the, hope in, the, of, in the hope of the resurrection and for all the departed, God of love and mercy. Hear our prayer. For deliverance from all danger, violence, oppression, and degradation, God of love and mercy. Hear our prayer. That we may end our lives in faith and hope without suffering and without reproach, God of love and mercy. Hear our prayer. In the communion of saints, let us commend ourselves and one another in all our life to Christ our God. God of love and mercy, hear our prayer. I invite you to take a few moments. Um, if you are watching this on Sunday morning live on Facebook to read each other's comments and to lift up those prayer requests um, to God. And for all the ways that we have uh, failed to 
to go the extra mile and to seek justice for our siblings and for the needy who come in into our lives, um, even when that needy person might be ourself. We ask that God make us whole. And towards that end, we confess our sins against God and our neighbor, saying together, God of all mercy, we confess that we have sinned against you, opposing your will in our lives. We have denied your goodness in each other, in ourselves, and in the world you have created. We repent of the evil that enslaves us, the evil we have done, and the evil done on our behalf. Forgive, restore, and strengthen us through our Savior, Jesus Christ, that we may abide in your love and serve only your will. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all your sins through the grace of Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. Amen. May the peace of Christ be always with you. And also with you. I invite you to pass the peace to your pets, to your family members, to your, even if they're the same, to your neighbors out the window, to your neighborhood, to this world that so desperately needs it, um, and to yourself. Peace. I'm not going to, I don't have to go very far. Peace. Peace, Michael. Peace, Ursa. Can you blow a kiss? Can you blow a kiss? Dale un beso. Beso. Peace, Ursa. Can you say peace to Michael? You blow him a kiss? Yeah, there it is. <laughs> peace, Ollie. <laughs> He's finally asleep. Oh, I see. <laughs> Won't <Sorry>. last. <laughs> Wait till I pull out the the bread for communion. <laughs> He'll smell it pop up. Um, we do have some announcements. Um, one announcement that I have is not not applicable. Never mind. I was I was gonna say I'm gonna try to take Friday and Saturday and Sunday off off. Um, but you won't know that because by the time you hear this, uh, watch this video, it will be Sunday and I'll be back. So, um, never mind. Um, now Earth is just blowing lots and lots of kisses, Michael. I'm sure they're all, they're all for you. Um, we have an upcoming class that I really should have talked about two weeks ago, last week, um, because it's, uh, it's coming right up November 1st. I, I think I was feeling like November was farther away than it actually is. So um, Kelsey Davis, who is a new member at St. George's along with her wonderful wife, Heather Dittmer, Kelsey is gonna start teaching a class on November 1st at 9.15 on Zoom. So right before the church service, um, she's gonna be teaching a class on Richard Rohr's book called Spirituality and the 12 Steps. Um, if you would like to read along, you can go ahead and order that book online. Uh, I know some of the local uh, bookstores like Malaprops and Firestorm um, have the ability to order that for you um, and send it to your house. Um, but um, yeah, it shouldn't be too hard to find. And we really hope you can join. It's, it's going to be a wonderful class. And Kelsey is a, a gifted um, pastor and, uh, and teacher. So I'm really looking forward to that. Um, social night is still happening Tuesdays at six. Um, Everett and Becky were all by themselves last week, apparently again. Um, and they stayed for about 10 minutes, but you know, they socialize with each other, so it's okay. But, um, if you feel like socializing and you have time on Tuesday night, um, please join them. Um, we are, I mentioned this last week, but I'll mention it again. We are a polling location for the general election on November 3rd. Um, so we would love for you to come out and volunteer if you can and, uh, and just be present with us. There are going to be some sweatshirts available, maybe just a few, but if you want a sweatshirt, call me. 
um, we are going to be providing um, empowering presence um, and encouraging entertainment to folks visiting our location to vote. And so totally nonpartisan, we're just gonna be there uh, offering people support and entertainment in case the lines are long, in case someone needs an umbrella, in case someone needs a mask, that kind of thing. Um, the Black Joy Experience is going to be there and um, going to try to get the reggae band that lives across the street from me to join. Um, so it's going to be really, really great. It's going to be a lot of fun and we would love to have you come and join us. Uh, it's going to be super distanced, super masked up and safe. Um, that is our goal. So, and if you cannot volunteer on that day, I would ask that you pray for us. Uh, there has been some intimidation at the polls and um, so please just hold us in your prayers on that day. Um, two more things. Our conversations about racism continue. We are a little bit behind. So if you thought you were behind, you probably aren't anymore. Um, we're going to continue this coming Wednesday at noon on Zoom. Um, we're going to continue reading the book Unfinished Journey by Jim Abbott. Uh, Father Jim Abbott is a retired priest here. And he wrote a book about racism in the Episcopal Church in this diocese of Western North Carolina. <laughs> so we'll read chapter five through the end. And the other thing is join us for coffee hour. It's right after the service and the link is in your email. Um, or if you don't receive our emails, it's at the bottom of your bulletin on our website. Alrighty. Um, Michael is going to shift us into communion mode. Um, oh, and give as you are able to us, um, to people in the world who need it, to yourself if you need it. Um, we always appreciate your financial help as well as your time and your talent. And you can donate by clicking donate on our website um, on, or, or by just sending us a check. So thank you. Holding on to my stone. <laughs> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. 
to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and good and joyful to give you thanks, O Holy God, so awesome and fountain. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of the universe and giver of life. You formed us in your own image and called us to dwell in your infinite love. You gave the world into our care that we might be your faithful stewards and show forth your bountiful grace. But we failed to honor your image in one another and in ourselves. We would not see your goodness in the world around us. And so we violated your creation, abused one another, and rejected your love. Yet you never ceased to care for us and prepared the way of salvation for all people. Through Abraham and Sarah, you called us into covenant with you. You delivered us from slavery, sustained us in the wilderness, and raised up prophets to renew your promise of salvation. Then in the fullness of time, you sent your eternal word made mortal flesh in Jesus. Born into the human family and dwelling among us, he revealed your glory. Giving himself freely to death on the cross, he triumphed over evil, opening the way of freedom and life. On the night before he died for us, our savior Jesus Christ took bread. When he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his friends and said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. As supper was ending, Jesus took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, drink this all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is poured out for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. Remembering his death and resurrection, we now present to you from your creation these gifts of bread and wine. 
by your Holy Spirit, may they be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grant that we who share these gifts may be filled with the Holy Spirit and live as Christ's body in the world. Bring us into the everlasting heritage of your children, that with all your saints, past, present, and yet to come, we may praise your name forever and ever. Amen. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, to you be honor, glory, and praise forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And now as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Friends, these are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. I invite you to share in the Eucharist in whatever way is possible for you, whether that's consuming consecrated bread, wine, or juice, uh, or unconsecrated bread, wine, or juice, or simply through inwardly acknowledging Christ's life within you. The body of Christ, the bread of heaven. The blood of Christ, the cup of salvation. In the name of our friend and our Savior, Jesus Christ, who is always present with you, may you know the healing power of God's love every day of your life. We pray now for those who are not receiving communion today. In union, O oh God, with your faithful people at every altar of your church, where the Holy Eucharist is now being celebrated, we offer praise and thanksgiving. Even if we do not receive you today in the form of the sacrament of your body and blood, we beseech you to come spiritually into our hearts. Cleanse and strengthen us with your grace, O oh Jesus and let us never be separated from you. May we live in you and you in us in this life and in the life to come. Amen. Let us pray. God of abundance, you have fed us with the bread of life and the cup of salvation. You have united us with Christ and one another. Now send us forth in the power of your spirit that we may proclaim your redeeming love to the world and continue forever in the risen life of Christ our Savior. Amen. Holy eternal majesty, holy incarnate word, holy abiding spirit, bless you forevermore. Amen. Amen. All right. I Because of all that screaming, I'm not going to even try to get the guitar. We're just going to do this. 
A cappella. For the beauty of the earth is our closing hymn. I welcome you to sing along. We'll sing verses one, two, three, and five. For the beauty of the earth, for the glory of the skies, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the wonder of each hour, of the day and of the night, hill and vale and tree and flower, sun and moon and stars of light. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For the joy of human love, family, kindred, parent, child, friends on earth and friends above, for all gentle thoughts and mild. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise. For thyself, best gift divine, to our race so freely give. For that great, great love of thine, peace on earth and joy in heaven. Lord of all, to thee we raise this our hymn of grateful praise let us go forth into the world rejoicing in the power of the spirit thanks be to god please join us for coffee hour if you would like and blessings on your week thank you michael so good to be with you Mwah.